How do you do, fellow kids? We're here to talk about video games and how hard they might be. I'm Average Trey, here with my co-host, Sid. Hey. He got his hay in, that's good. Yeah. And today, we got a special guest. I'll give him the special uh, subtitle, don't worry. Uh, none other than a longtime Sunshine Runner and runner of other games of the GameCube era. And other stuff, I guess. Paper Ario. Hello. That was, that was a good sum. <laughs> And other stuff, I guess. <laughs> there, there, I was like, wait. Also, he did some other stuff that wasn't on the GameCube. That's right. But you know, most mostly the GameCube. GameCube's kind of cool. Yeah, you're you're definitely a GameCube boy, I presume. Yeah, I mean, I definitely played the most GameCube games, and to my collection, that's definitely the most I have and have the like fondest memories of. This is episode. This is episode thirty-four. I said hey before earlier. I'm Sid. Hi. Uh, Who are you? My show. It's my show. It's Trey's also here. I'm just kind of here. I do the intro all the time, so don't worry. Yeah, worry. he does it. I've done the intro like six weeks in a row, and now Trey. And then is I here. raged at him because that's not true at all. Yes. Anyway, Trey Paper also plays the clarinet. This is a fun fact. I would like to just drop in right here before I forget because I didn't write it down. But that was, the clarinet's that, important. That was a good fun fact. For, it it you know it it was the hint that I gave out as my podcast guest hint and Rasmus figured it out. Ah, uh, you know that's a good even hint. Rasmus knows. Yeah, it's he plays the clarinet and he goes, he sits there for a while and he goes, I have no idea, and then an hour later he's just like, oh, I know who it is because uh -huh. it's just like, <laughs> eventually you you figure it out. You you just look up clarinet players and Paper Ario is right there. But very few people in the Sunshine community actually have heard Paper play on stream. Yeah, that was like because that was quite a long time ago when we commentated a match. It was us three, and then Paper played us out with his clarinet when it was over. What 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 match was that even? Do you remember? It was some bingo thing, I think. I don't remember. Was it like a good match? No. Um, okay. considering I don't remember it, probably not. <laughs> See, back in Goodness. 2014, I commentated every match except one in the bingo tournament. So me commentating it uh -huh. means literally nothing, nothing as to the quality of the match. But, True. Yeah, I, I didn't commentate as much as Sid, but I can say one thing. I do remember the clarinet. That's all I got. So, But yeah, we had Paper play the clarinet. Hello, Paper. Welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, how, how are you? You know, I asked before the podcast, how are you? You didn't actually answer my how are you. I just want to know how you are. It's important. I'm, I'm great, man. Thank Game you. is fun. Life is fun. Did you do any prep mm. for this podcast? Of course not. As we were telling you before this podcast, we put a lot of prep in. We put a lot of effort. Correct. Honestly, like way, way more prep than cheese, way more prep than chilling, dude. We yeah. This is gonna be the best episode of all time. Be because um, because we've known paper for so long, we have we had so much to dig through, uh, uh, experience wise and memories, you know, just to ask and prod about. But first, we're gonna go super general with paper. We're gonna ask him a very wide. And then a wide question, and then we're going to get narrower as we go along. Right, Trey? Are we going to start from the top, the, the early history? Yeah, we're going to go early history. Paper, okay. how did you get into video games, just in general? In general, I just played them a lot when I was younger. And I was always, like, super competitive with, like, my brother and sister. Like, we would see, like, who could beat, like, a video game, like, the first. Like, sort of like speedrunning, but, like, you know, not at all. Are they older um, or younger siblings? older okay. so so Are actually that's you're you're in the spot i'm in being the younger person you get access to the most stuff yeah there was a lot of stuff that you know because my siblings had but yeah like all three of us like you know we sort of played games and that was probably how i started i the first game i played was like pokemon blue hmm. when i was like four or something because my so brother gave it gave it to me the game boy was your first thing yeah technically Okay. Game Boy is a cool system. I, I actually played a lot of Game Boy games. Like, I played Superstar Saga, Pokemon. Oh, Game Kirby. Boy Advance. Yeah, I guess more, yeah, more Game Boy Advanced. How did you, how did you race each other? If you only had one, did you only have one copy of the game? Or did you just, like... Yeah, it, I mean, it wasn't exactly, like, you know, the racing we know. It was just, like, which person beat the game first? Yeah. That was our sort of, like, racing, but... The, the regular sibling rivalry of, okay, of, of we, who can we, do something we own the first. game, I'm going to sit beside you as you play, and then I'm going to do exactly what And then I'm going to play, and then, <laughs> yeah. And then Eventually. mom says it's my turn on the Xbox. 
My turn on the GameCube, Mom. <laughs> so Game Boy Advance. You start with Game, Game Boy, Boy Advance. Advance. It's are are you a big uh, super? What's the Mario Kart for for Advance called? Super I, did, I didn't play that one. You never played that I think, one? No, I think the first Mario Kart game I got into was probably Double Dash Ooh. or the DS one. It was one of those. Dude, yes, Super like... Circuit was my very first Mario Kart. It's got a, it's got a big place in my heart, even though it's pretty overlooked and kind of the black sheep of the series. I love it. So, dude, every, everything's the black sheep of every series now. I'm just, I'm, I <laughs> seem to, I'm like a black sheep magnet. I mean, I run Mario Sunshine, the black sheep of 3D Mario's, uh, Super Circuit. First Mario Kart. I don't have any more examples for this, but just trust me. <laughs> <Two>. <laughs> hey, you I think, I think I'm right. Is is there a black sheep of Paper Mario? Ooh, uh, anything past Thousand Year Door? <laughs> yeah, basically. In, in the general paper community, that would be what most people. The, the say. majority of Paper Mario is black sheep. <laughs> God, you know, I think I would actually say that like. Maybe the N64 could be considered the black sheep because no one really counts Color Splash or Sticker Star. Mm -hmm. And so if we look at just the first three games, like pay, pay, the original, well, no. I don't know. I think they each of the games serve their own purpose. It's kind of hard to pinpoint one. Like SPM is different from them, but I wouldn't say that it was like the black sheep surely because it like it just played differently. I guess for for me personally... I could never get into the first Paper Mario. I, I played Thousand Year Door first, and I loved it. Um, mm -hmm. Then I tried I out Paper too. Mario on emulator a couple years later. And the whole time I was playing it, it just seemed like a watered-down version of TTYD. So I feel like you can only really fully enjoy Paper Mario, the first one, if you played it before TTYD. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I could get behind that. I, I, I was the same way. I played TTYD first, and then I figured out much later that that was even the second game in the series. Oh, yeah. And so then I got the original paper. I think I enjoyed it the first time I played through. But like it's a good game. It, I just didn't find it as interesting. In so a lot of like... ways, yeah, it is a watered-down TTYD. And as like a casual, like I wouldn't recommend playing you know, like Pape 64 over TTYD. I just recently played through TTYD, actually. And it was a really good Solid game. Solid game. Are you See, gonna try out uh, hero mode when Reed finishes it? Maybe. If it's good. If it's good, maybe. Balls in your court, Reed. See, I only asked about Paper Mario because I th I thought it would just be kind of funny because everybody hates the later ones. Uh, I've never played a Paper Mario, as uh, some might know. Uh, I Reed really wants me to play TTYD. I think. For I some partially reason. want you Reed to, but I respect you if you don't. To play TTYD. Yeah, Reed definitely wants everybody to play a TTYD, but because he just wants to make all that money from hero mode. <laughs> yeah, all that Back. cash moolah. You know what's funny is that even though your name is literally Paper Mario, I never make the connection to Paper Mario when I see your name. I just think of you as like Mario Sunshine just, guy. Yeah, sort of just developed like, because I mean, I never really played Pape too much. Like, it was never my main speed game. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's why, like, you never got the association. Like, you just... And actually, I think a identity. question that possibly every viewer is wondering is where does the name Paper Mario come from? Was it a typo or was it intentional? It was a typo. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that was, it. That, <laughs> that's like a 2012 story. Like, so back then, like, my computer was garbage and Twitch was weird. And so sometimes I would have to, like press a key multiple times to get it to actually like go into a chat message and so i thought i typed the m and then i made my account and the m wasn't there you thought the name paper mario would be available well it was paper mario one two three one of course oh right with the numbers <laughs> <laughs> okay that's fair gosh how could i forget the numbers that's classic what? It is classic. I'm a little offended right now. Paper what Mario 1231 got the record with GBS or whatever. I don't know. What about the brief period of time where it was Paperio? Do you, do you regret changing it from Paperio? Like, do you think about going back ever? <laughs> I don't think about ever going back. But I do think it's funny how I hated that name back in, like, I don't know when that happened, mid-2016? Yeah. Somewhere around there. But whenever that happened... Like, I really hated that name. And, like, now half 
of the people I talk to call me Pape. So it's just like, it's funny how that turned around. You should just go for the name Pape MS. Pape MS. <laughs> See, I would have hated the name Paperio because I hate pears. Because pears suck. How do you? See, what's your stance on okay. pears? Uh, I don't really have a like preference toward pears. I don't buy them myself, but if like someone handed me a pear, I'd probably eat it. I'm the same way. I haven't. I don't think I've eaten a pear in like over five years. I don't, I don't like pears. Pears suck. I'm just. I'm just. But we love pears, I'd rather right? eat a lot of fruits over pears. Yeah, they're like bottom tier fruit. For sure. That I agree with. Yeah, I can think of a lot of worse fruits than pears. Name two. Blueberries. What? And yeah, I don't like blueberries that much. Why do you hate blueberries? I know they're super healthy, but they just I don't know they're gross. I don't you know. mean on their own? But what just about in a mother? blueberries by themselves? Oh, okay. What did right. you think I meant? <laughs> I don't know. Like, put them in a muffin. Who, who eats a pear muffin? Yeah, of course in a muffin. That's because of the muffin. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but the blueberry adds something. I'm talking you know? straight up fruit, yo. I understand, yo. <laughs> don't yo <laughs> okay, me, bro. Thanks, yo. Okay. <laughs> Um, the All other right, one, know, uh, durian, haha. <laughs> haha. I've never had durian, but I hear it tastes like shit, so. Yeah, and smells like shit, too. <clears throat> yep. So anyways, um, so early gaming, a lot of Game Boy, uh, GameCube, of course. Right. Um. Yeah, GameCube was definitely the biggest system. Although, I didn't play a lot of classics on the GameCube, though. Like, I didn't play Pikmin until much later. I didn't mm -hmm. play... What are the other like big GameCube classics? Was Sunshine one of your first ones you played? Yes. I played like a lot of Mario Sunshine, Mario Baseball, and like Kirby Air Ride when I was like less than ten years old. Actually wait, so for like a small experiment, did you play Mario sixty four growing up? No. No. Okay, it's furthering my theory that a lot of Sunshine Riders never played sixty four. <laughs> I played sixty four. I know I said a lot, not all of them. I know you said. Thank you. <laughs> Just to clarify, because Paper and I never played 64 growing up, so coincidence? I think not. Yeah, I don't think. It's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's not a coincidence. You're right. <clears throat> anyway, now when when we had an N64 in like my household, I was like stupid young, and like the GameCube like basically it just came out, and so right the N64 just got like obsoleted in our household. And I don't think we ever even had Mario 64. We had, like, Pokemon Stadium. Ooh. That's that a, a good one. Game. Did you play the Drowsy game? The Drowsy <sighs> minigame? I wouldn't remember it. Oh. But. Dude, it's been maybe? so long since I've played Pokemon Stadiums at all that the only memory. Like, I, I know the Kakuna minigame where you harden at the right time to get not get hit by the uh, rock. I do, I do remember that. That's That's a fun one. And then uh, the drowsy one. I don't remember what you actually do, but I remember him swinging his his sleepy thing back and forth. I don't know. P Pokemon Stadium is a really good game. I mean, I want to know about Mario Baseball. I've heard of Mario Baseball. I cannot think of of, of Mario Baseball. I can think of Toadstool Tour, the, the golf game. I can think That's of Mario the... Strikers. <laughs> Toadstool Tour is really good. I, I both games are really good. Mario Baseball. Right. I have i don't think I've ever seen gameplay of this game. It, it's probably one of the more hidden ones. Like, um, I think there's two games. There was one on GameCube um, and then one on Wii. Isn't it like Mario yeah. Sluggers it's just like a or Mario, something? Yeah, Mario Slu Sluggers, yeah. Yep. But uh... it's just like a, another Mario sports game. <laughs> I only have, I have one experience playing Mario Baseball. And it was with SM Loader because he actually had the game growing up and he just utterly wrecked me because I never played the game before. <laughs> nice. It was like 20 to 0 probably. Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we, we're in GameCube. We, we play Super Mario Sunshine. We play Mario Baseball. We're, we're getting through all the sports games. Correct. When do you... See, so you're an early addition to the Super Mario Sunshine speedrunning community. You were before Trey and I. I correct years, couple years um, probably about like one year probably. You were you were, you were one of the original, it ish. Yeah, no, I was definitely like one of the first like hundred runners of the game. But you oh, were easily like in, in early 2012. There was like what 50 people maybe. Uh, God, it's hard to say. Maybe like 60, 70. It 
it was closer to 100 than you would probably expect. I'm trying to picture that old Google spreadsheet as best as I can. But most of the times were like very high. Like at that point, like Tobo and Chibi had like the best times by like six or seven minutes. And then it was like hidden power. Which, which to to modern standards sounds ridiculous, but in old standards, like that that made a lot of sense. None of us were like nearly as good as them. HP was like third with a 139 and the best non JP runner. Yeah, how, like just getting sub 140 was top three. <laughs> it's how, crazy. How old were you when you started speedrunning? Because you were like, you you would have been I like been how twelve. That's insane. Yeah, Literally I was, fetch. So I was really young. So you've been playing for eight years. Correct. And it, hey, you know what? To to further our uh, our. Uh, Analogy with simply playing for eight years, being cream of the crop for the last like couple, and then getting one twenty record this year. Mm-hmm. Very yeah, pretty been simply. popping off. Yeah, I love simply. I'm glad that he's doing well. But speaking of simply, you're also doing well, having the one twenty record right now. Are you? So you've been playing for that long. I, w- I was going to just mm-hmm. jump into the... You know what? Screw it. I'm going to jump into the guy question. Are you scared of guy? Of course. <laughs> there's no SMS... If you're not scared of guy, there's probably something wrong with you. Are Okay. The the guy question. Like, are you afraid of... Is, does it remind you of Nanashi in a way? I think guy probably. is scarier than Nanashi. Really? I, guy is... I, I Yeah, I think guy is scarier purely because, like... He speaks English. I think his... He speaks yes, English, <laughs> so we know more of his personality. Um, and then also, like, I think his level of execution is just, like, unmatchable by anyone right now. I but, like, pretty much yeah, agree. Like, I, yeah, I'm scared of Guy, and if he gets the record, I, like, will not be shocked. I also, like, glad I had it. It was cool to have it. Well, you have it still. <laughs> I do. But you talk like, as if you go lose it like right now. I probably will. Guy is probably doing a run right now and will beat me right now during this podcast. This it, podcast what? is pretty cursed to where I bet that if we like talk about, oh yeah, you have the record. That's pretty awesome. By the time we upload it, he's going to have it. Well, it, it's it's happened a few times where it's like calf was like, oh yeah, I'm totally down to do any percent runs. I'm, I'm getting into it. And then like by the time we uploaded the podcast, he's like, nah, fuck this. I hate this game. <laughs> like I'm done. <laughs> so it, it has done that before, but yeah. So, but like throughout all the, so you've been playing the game for eight years and uh-huh. you've gone through all the eras, every, everybody being really good. You being good, you know, I was good. You, I was good a couple times in this game. The, the any percent record back in 2014. That was highlight of my career. Pog. Easily. I'd say that what? paper you were you were pretty strong in the pre GBS era. Like you had. I was. I was like top ten player, top like top five in like early 2012, which didn't really mean in like anything. Even um, later than that, probably you had like a 132, and that was like amazing. That was yeah. That was like a top ten time pre GBS. Because I grinded was... my ass off to get uh, a 134. I think I got it just before GBS was found, finally. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy to think that Chibi had one of those in, like, 2011? Dude, yeah, that, that always blew my mind. Like, in 2013, I'd be like, dude, how'd this guy get this time in 2011? I can barely even get sub-140. Mm-hmm. Nuts. Yeah. Uh, dude, the sub-140 barrier was, like... One of like the most satisfying barriers, I think, in Sunshine Any Percent. Yeah, I feel like once you break it, you have like some momentum going, and then around one thirty six, one thirty seven, you kind of hit a plateau again. Yeah, it's like fuck. The no, I'm <laughs> three minutes off the record. Well, mm-hmm. to make it about me for a second, I, I, everybody talks about the sub one forty bear. I'm the only person that I, I don't really care about the one sub one forty bear. Like. I think it took me four runs to get sub 140 and I submitted to the, submitted it to the leaderboard and they accepted oh. it. And I was like, oh, okay. And then GBS came out and then I quit. <laughs> Cause I remember seeing your name on the leaderboard. Well, that and... makes more sense. Like toward the end of 2014 stuff was a lot different than 2012. 
True. And thinking. also, leaderboards didn't require video proof unless it was like a world record back then. I didn't lie. <laughs> I believe Sid you. Was not, Sid's not a liar. Confirmed. I'm not a liar. I've never lied once. I, re I remember when I started participating in the IL leaderboard, uh, and I started typing my times, even if they were record, and not submitting a, a video right away. And then <laughs> the equivocal geniuses and the oat flakers were like, hey, bro. You, do you have a video? And I'm sitting there going like, I'm <laughs> streaming right now. Like I'll upload it later. Like I'll just like I, I I'm not a I I have never lied within speed running. As yet. far as we know. <laughs> as far as you know. That's exactly what a liar would say. It's true. All of his runs spliced. But you know we'll we'll keep tabs on you. But we believe you so far. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been through the entire like all the eras of SMS. Is Guy the scariest of them all so far? Is that like a question that I can even ask? Can you approximate like Samu back in the? Because I I was only around. Yeah, no, in I I think this is actually a really interesting question. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like maybe like mid twenty fifteen Tobo. Ooh. I'm trying to. I don't think. know when when Tobo was in his prime, he felt like a beast. I think okay okay it's um, it's it's different now because like. Paper and I, we know what it's like, and and Sid, sorry, <laughs> we we all know what it's like to be like in that top player position, right? right. Yeah, I totally understand. You guys I mean, can say for ninety six shines. Come on, ninety six shines. It's fine. It's fine. So I mean, now that we've all been there, um, it feels different. Like you can sort of like you can gauge the effort and skill required to be at that level now. But like back in the day in twenty fourteen when we weren't top level players. At least I wasn't, or said paper almost, but not really. <laughs> right. No, I got um, you. It's hard to know like what the top runners at that time were doing. Yeah, Tobo just seemed so untouchable because we weren't at that level yet. Right. But now that we understand how good Guy really is, he seems scarier. I think Guy would still have to take the cake because I that man just has like unlimited potential. It really, it really seems like it. He just. I've never seen him struggle to get a PB. Exactly. In any category. See, I've only felt the might <laughs> of the people just like, oh, I'm good at all the categories. I'll play 96 shines for a couple months and uh, see what I can do. Mm -hmm. Where I was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be the only one to dedicate. To After Trey got his 96 shine world record and got all four with like a 243. which is, <laughs> It was so bad. <laughs> which is 12 minutes worse than the record is right now. Dude, 2015 like, nope. standards were wild, man. Nobody they cared were. about 96 shines. And so he did he did the play 96 shines for a couple or like two runs and get the record. And then I started actually caring. Shadow Mario uh started caring and then bopped me in order to make me not get it. And then the no, came in. Didn't Shadow Mario do the play two runs and leave it also? Yeah. How? He didn't really care about it though. No, nobody I'm the only person that cares about 96 shines. See, okay, let me this is a good point. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting you, but I'm just explaining. I, I think I think Trey just. I gotta make uh, it clear to anyone. I I still get comments asking or saying I will wait patiently for the 79 or 96 shines record progression video, and I'm sitting there like, do you realize how little history these rec these categories have? It's it's like, literally, literally okay. Just it's it's literally just the good players at 90 or any percent and 120 just being like, I'm bored. I'm yeah, gonna go it, to 96. So, okay. it, it, literally, that would be the history. Yeah. The only the only interesting part of 96 shines is Sid's rise to prominence for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, okay, top level I player just tries it oh out because they're bored. Ooh, world I record. Didn't, I and didn't then know Sid, that this would be the episode that would make me cry. <laughs> okay. And then Sid comes around and he's trying his gosh darndest and he. It, well, that's he the comes only, out on top for a little bit. That's the only interaction I've ever like. I've been top ten in any percent, but that was when I don't know, just after EYG or just before EYG, and then EYG took off, and I was just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna sit back here and let everybody else go. <laughs> and then, so ninety six shines was me interacting with Trey, and then yep. but Trey's time sucked, and then Shadow Mario pushed it, and Leviton actually pushed it a little bit, like. Like Leviton, really? I didn't know about that. Leviton played it t until like two forty one. But like it was better than I don't know uh, if he had the record. But I don't even remember that when it was a good time, and then like Shadow Mario had it, and then when Nanashi was dominant, he was like, you know, I'm taking a break from any percent because I keep choking Bowser. I'm gonna play 96 shines, and then uh, gets the record by three minutes, 
And we're like Shadow Mario and I are sitting there going like shit. And Shadow Mario goes, uh, yeah, Sid's not going to get the record now. Lull. And I'm, and then I didn't even really react to that. I just kind of sat there and was just like, yeah, he's right. And Dude, Shadow uh, Mario was like low key disrespectful to you. It, no, he's <laughs> high key, like high key disrespectful, but also high key kind of right until you got the record. Yeah, so. Until I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to grind. And then I got record. And then, uh, he came back. What was that got time? Was that like was a two thirty six? Uh, two thirty five. Two thirty five. Yeah. It was like okay. it, it was. Nanashi had a two, high two thirty five, and then I uh, almost bopped that. Shadow Mario was an asshole because I was grinding. He came back and then got a low two thirty five before I got the record, and then I got the right. record. From, I do remember that. And then I, I got the record that. from him. So Shadow Mario being. High level 120 shines runner back in the or back in the day like an hour like a an hour ago in speed run however long like in, in speed, speed run, run correlate like dog years yeah and speed run years so Shadow Mario like Levitin Trey uh, then Nanashi came in got the record Shadow got it Shadow Mario got it from him I got it from him for like a day Nanashi came back got it again. And then I had to grind, and then like SB came in at some point, and then Guy got it by two minutes after I got the record back, and I'm like, okay, whatever. See, like, that's a decent history. Ninety six shines could be cool. But Come on, Trey. Well, see, no, not really. <laughs> it, 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 Ninety six shines. The only that's the only that me not me interacting with high level players at this point is people coming to Ninety six shines and being like, fuck you. <laughs> if it wasn't for Sid, there would be absolutely no history of that category whatsoever. Because it would still be what, like two thirty four. Yeah. Like guy would have come and then gotten two thirty four and then went. Oh, I got record. I mean, who knows what it'd be now? But anyways, that that kind of reminds me. So I think paper, you've had the record in every category at at least some point, right? Yeah. That That's has true. that. Yeah. I think. I've seventy nine. I had ninety. I I had seventy nine. Like twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Oh, that reason. Like oh, a, I don't remember that. It was I yeah. I, I I got like a two twenty two that was like slightly lower than who had it at that point. Because I know you had ninety six shines like forever ago. Yeah, I held ninety six. I actually would be in the ninety six shines history for back in like twenty thirteen. But it was like two fifty or something. Yeah, those days. Dude, sub three ninety six um, shines. Oh man. Sub three ninety six shines. That was at one point. Like, you know what? You know what we could do, said. I got an idea. Uh, you know what? Shoot, we're gonna bring back. WR history segments. Yeah. And that's when we'll do the history of all the other bullshit categories. <laughs> well, I don't know any of 58. Who do, well, paper okay, that's, have 58. That's, that's going beyond bullshit, okay? Yeah, we don't need to talk about 58. We don't shines, go we don't go to that level of bullshit. But it did happen. I did have that one. Yeah, and then it, go for it. Any percent for 20 hours and then 120 shines recently. Hey, you know what? 20 hours is longer than I held the 96 shines the last time I had it. And you know what? It's That's not a so bustling sad. category. You know, I was just sitting there going, like, I really hope Guy doesn't take it. And then 13 hours later, Guy's just like, you know what? I beat it by two minutes. And you're like, that oh. Was... Suck okay. it. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there going, like, why? <laughs> and then he's just like, I don't know. I played the game. <laughs> so, Paper, game how bro. much do you think in this recent stint where you really rose up and took the world by storm with all these 120 improvements. How much of that uh -huh. is the new routing and how much is your hard work and dedication? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go with 50, 50 okay. because, and I think that actually would work out exactly because I had a two fifty nine fifty at the start of all of this. Right. And I would say, I would say the compared to the route I used then, I probably save about a minute, if not slightly more than that. Um, plus I added in some like other like situational routing things like pin a six with, um, when you get banana doing like the, the triangle and the X at the same time. Wait, um, isn't, didn't, didn't we always do that? Or am I thinking of something else? No, nah, usually you got the, like at the start of pin a six, you would get the first X right. and then you would get on Yoshi, eat the bird. And then you do the bottom triangle to the top triangle, top triangle, to the bottom triangle. Wait, you do Yoshi before the second triangle? Oh wait, no, you're right. You're right. I was thinking of the axes. I'm so dumb. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But the Nanashi came up with this right a while ago where you when you get banana, you can 
unlock the X, unlock the triangle, mm. get the X, get on Yoshi, and get to the top triangle. And that saves like six, seven seconds. Dude, Pin of Six is one of my favorite levels in 120 because there's so many ways you can do it. Yeah, no, Pin of Six is really cool. Especially with like some of the new stuff that O'Flaker's been working on to like maximize like the the bird and like certain other fruit RNGs. It was really cool. Can we just talk about how far 120's come recently because of O'Flaker? Yeah, dude. O'Flaker's insane. He's he's a genius at routing. No wonder he's so good at bingo. Mm -hmm. like, we, I... we thought we had it solved two years ago. Like when I was doing the sub three grind, we were all like, man, there's really nowhere else the route can go. It's just we got to optimize this route, but sure enough, Oathlaker comes around and is like, oh, there's a minute of time save here, 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 and here. Oh, okay. Let's do that. You know what's, you know what's kind of funny? Is the first half of 120 is actually probably more similar to any percent now yeah. than it was when <laughs> you did your run. Dude, it's so because funny how, like, over time, the first half of 120 becomes more and more any percent. Yeah, I, I was... Because, like, in your run, you would have done... I think that like, my start was pretty much any person except you do pin it reds, of course. Pin it reds, lily pad. Lily pad, yeah. And was there any other shine you did? I can't. It's been so long, I can't remember. Because actually, like, my, cause my run my run is so old, it even predates doing beach shine early. Right, right. Oh, so yeah. I didn't even you get didn't that pre-9 second early. time saver. Yeah, that, that's important to think about, too, compared to like, the route using your 259. Anyways... The whole question of like my hard work and um how much the route saves. So like that route saved a minute, and then I put in a lot of work to make a lot of strats better, and then also just you know updating strats. Mm -hmm. Like the the big find was you know RTA consistent rocket reds for Bianco six. Oh yeah. Oh that's right. Because, how much does that save if you get a good one? Um, optimally, I think it can actually be up to fifteen. But that depends on the butterfly in Bianco 100. Mm. Because basically, the way you do Bianco 100 now, when you go into the village, the butterfly can either be right by that like first ring of pokies, or it can be in like the back spot where the piantas and the floating coin are. And I so see. you want it to be by the, the flower ring, so that way you don't have to walk all the way over there to walk back and then do the flower ring. Um, and that saves like four seconds. So compared to like O Flaker's comparison, that said it saved ten seconds. So okay. And so <clears throat> in your recent uh, rise in that category, did you uh, vastly change your practice regiments at all, or did you like mostly do like the same sort of approach to practicing the game? God. Um. I definitely spent a lot more time focusing on like the route time saves. Like, I practiced a lot of Bianco when I was trying to get really good. Yeah. Dude, late, late game Bianco is actually really hard. <laughs> it is, but it's, it was also super technical, which probably helped me with the rest of the game. And since, like, you have to do a lot of rocket tech in Bianco now, which I think yeah. basically helps all of the rocket sections. Um, Because, like, Bianco 8 has more rocket tech now. Bianco 6 Reds obviously has a lot. Um, but yeah, yeah, in terms of like the other levels I practiced, I don't know. I don't really remember too much. I was just doing like sort of general practice. Okay. Um, and I know we've been covering like very recent stuff, but to take it back a notch, w one of your main inspirations for running this game was uh, Mario Sunshine Versus, correct? It was that that led me into finding out about like speedrunning and the Mario Sunshine like speedrunning community because back then N Killer and Kitten now was one of the people that was in that versus right and so when I found his channel I found actual Mario Sunshine speedruns and so then I found the rest of the community and then from there that's when I like I basically right after I figured out that existed I like did my first speedrun. Yeah, see, I knew about that series when it was going on and they were re releasing episodes. For those who don't know, uh, Mario Sunshine Versus was the Let's Play race. I'm not going to say speedrun race. It was a Let's Play, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Between uh, Attacking Toucans and Josh Jepsen, the Mario Sunshine 120 Shines. 
and it was really funny and really well done. Editing was really good for 2011 standards, especially. <laughs> and it didn't immediately inspire me to speedrun stuff. It sort of just like opened my eyes to the possibility of like racing games. And then uh -huh. that sort of snowballed into when I found like old AGDQ 2012 VODs and then went from there. But I guess, Paper, you went like pretty much immediately from seeing that series of speedrunning. Yeah, I think I probably watched a few GDQ runs because AGDQ 2012 was like, I think, really big in like it was rising the, first... the speedrunning community. Yeah, it was like the first, um, like, I guess it got like relatively popular. Relatively popular and like probably was one of the bigger ones back then that like started giving attention to Twitch and speedrunning and all that. Yeah, 2013 especially was where like it really popped off. Moving on from Sunshine for now, I guess. You run various other games as well, if I understand correctly. <laughs> there's 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 a couple. Um So Kirby's Epic Yarn, how do you how does yes. one pick this game up to speedrun? Or decide um, to pick this game up? Well, you gotta decide that you have some pretty bad taste. Okay. I'm um, taking this taking notes. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking notes too. You gotta <laughs> You gotta you gotta have a love for two D platformers with lots of tech skill and hard inputs. Yeah. When I think yeah. Kirby um, game, I think lots of tech skill. Mm -hmm. Lots of tech skill, and the best part about the game is that you have to use not only one horizontal Wiimote, but two horizontal Wiimotes. What? Why is that? Which is, um, so basically <laughs> with with the second player in Kirby's Epic Yarn, you can spawn like. A second Kirby, and so you can take one of your Kirby's, you can grab the second Kirby, and then you can throw them up places and do a bunch of skips and stuff with that. That's cool. That that is probably one of the the more interesting things about the the yarn Kirby speed run. Although now the community is divided on that, and so <laughs> most people actually don't even run with all that fun stuff. No. <laughs> I know, dude. I'm super sad about it too. Dude, that sounds sad. See. It sounded kind of hype up until you you said the the community's cracking down on the the cheater two player people, you know. Exactly. It's wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that they consider it cheating, or is it just like a separate? Well, it's category? not like cheating. It's like it's a separated category, and most people do one p and like the the modern Kirby's Epic Yarn community that doesn't exist. Like <laughs> they prefer to like optimize one p instead of two p. Dude, that reminds me of like Mario Galaxy Runners. Why do so many Galaxy Runners play Mario instead of Luigi? I, I don't know, dude. I don't get I it. I think Mario is such a worse speedrun for Galaxy. It has, Wait. like, the long-ass intro. He's not as good with movement. Like, is, Isn't that, like, a new development, though? I feel like Mario used to be the typical Galaxy run up until fairly recently, and then they went, okay, Luigi, because I'm so sick of watching this opening cutscene. But why wouldn't Luigi yeah. become popular immediately if people hate cutscenes so much? Because they like... It, it, it's like looking at the SMS community. It's like, oh, they're doing hacked file now. We should play as Luigi. You know? Well, it's, it's weird. Not... I mean, people have been doing Luigi, but like only some. Luigi was like always a category. I yeah. played Luigi when I ran Galaxy. That was an interesting that's time. What? I don't so, know. I, just, I guess but... I just don't get why you would even decide to do Mario. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't ever get that either. Mario was just like so much worse. It's the start because of the I'm tired game, of running man. out of air when I'm swimming. It's the start of the game. That's how you start the game. You play as Mario. How do you not play Mario in a Mar Mario Galaxy? But then you... Then you play the new game plus. That's faster. Yeah, it's fine. But then I I understand how it it was, but I understand the development of it. That's my whole point. Anyway, Kirby's okay. Epic Yarn one player. Disgusting. Why do you despise this category? It like so I think the most like I just said it, like the most interesting part about Yarn Kirby is the skips and things that you can do with 2P. Because that introduces a whole new layer of tech that's also like decently challenging to do because you have to literally control like two separate kirby's at the same time yes um because you started to paint it as if or it, it sounded like you were painting the the second wii mode as a bad thing and now it's like the only good thing so i'm very I'm, no I'm though, getting... that is the only good thing yes the, the <laughs> community though of yarn kirby like they prefer running without 2p yeah i, I yes I, I, I get that. Like I and and that's just that's where I was going with that. Like they don't like the two P run. 
I, what, what exactly was like your question? I just want to know what's bad about One Piece. Like what? Like taking it out all rem- the fun stuff. They just just without all the fun stuff. Just t- yank. It's it, the... it is. It, you just yank out fun strats. <laughs> Dang. Is it so? It's like glitchless Super Mario Sunshine. Okay, and you want to know that you want? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Like you just add in more stupid things by doing glitchless Sunshine ninety percent. You can't do turbo storage. You can't do GWKs. You can't do all this, and then it's just like here's a new category. You can't yeah. do casino skip. No casino skip. Yeah. Honestly, you want to know what's even worse though is like, sorry Trey, but like half of the Yarn Kirby run is already one player. You yeah. only used two P and like half of the levels which i also thought that that was my reason i was like why are we splitting a category that's like 50 percent identical but Fair. yeah how, how big is this yarn kirby community <laughs> like 50 people and the oh, active dang. community is like five maybe ten <laughs> see that's that's I, than... I don't follow it anymore but like basically there are two good yarn kirby runners which are me and this guy named funky um, and neither of us are playing the game right now and don't really have intentions to because we both have the world record in our respective categories and don't really care about the other one. Fair. So pretty bad. Like no one else can basically challenge us because no one has tried to get nearly like good at yarn Kirby. Hold my beer. I'm playing yarn Kirby right now. I'm going to bop Hold your my house. Beer. <laughs> I'm coming for you, paper. You could see, you really could. You say five or ten isn't that much. That's as much as the entirety of the Assassin's Creed speedrunning community. The entirety of it. There's like five runners. Yeah, and you were acting like it was so small. I was like fifty. That's quite a bit. Like, <laughs> and Assassin's- Trey, Trey, and I, uh, Trey, uh, Trey and I are debatably part of that community. Well, that's like <laughs> the number of runs that have been done. The community probably has never been larger than like ten, twenty. Still more yeah. than Assassin's Creed. But even Creed. still, like, yeah, I mean, like, it's definitely. Not like nobody plays the game, but it's very inactive. I just find it funny that after all this time, I'm still fourth place in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I'm fifth. That's, not, <laughs> that's what it was when I posted that run. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so they change it from two P to one P. All right. You distance uh-huh. yourself from Yard Kirby. What's the next game you go to after Yarn Kirby for speedrunning? Um, after Yarn Kirby, I probably went back to Sunshine at that point. But I think, like, in between, I probably played Pape. Pape was a really cool second speed game that I picked up. Pape, Paper Mario. Pape, Paper Mario, for those who don't. Pape, Paper Mario. The terms. Because you are Pape. You can't speedrun yourself. I, you That's are, what I'm you are correct. Yeah. <laughs> I am Pape. Um, so Paper Mario. I speedrun that game. Um, like which categories one? did you play? Like all cards or something? I played all of them. The one I played most was probably all cards. Um, I can explain why, but like all cards was usually the category I played. At one point, I was like second, and that's like my main claim to fame about Pape. But I've got some like good times in basically all the categories, and I was playing on the slowest version by modern standards, so. From what I understand, any percent Paper Mario is actually ridiculously hard. It is, and Glower is really good. But like any like any percent Paper Mario is just really hard because the ending is super like luck based. Like right, you either need the, like the Bowser fight. The Bowser fights, so you either need good caps or you need Bowser to miss essentially. And like there's no in between. And like the the harder any percent route also uses like a strat that like one third of the time works. Which is where you use like timeout on the hallway Bowser fight. Hmm. And so if you get this timeout, which works one third of the time, oh, then Bowser so will just like not do not Bowser will do nothing for like two turns, and you can just whack him. That's okay, a one third chance that it works. Yeah. Okay. Ass- assume somebody doesn't know anything about Paper Mario. You know this hypothetical person, which might, might be in the call right now. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Could theoretically, like, could be sitting right. Okay. Nah, surely me. not. Though we all know what's going on. Right, so- we, we all know what's going. What the? What's a hall pass? <laughs> oh. All right. So, Sid, you ever been in school and like need to go? To no. The like, what's <laughs> in? What's in the Paper Mario hall pass? Did he I've say never hall heard- pass? Did you say hall pass? No. I said hallway. <laughs> I heard hall pass. 
No, this isn't school. Hall past Bowser. That's what I heard. Um, Bowser, can I go to the restroom? I, I was talking about hallway Bowser. So pretty much in Pape, the chapter eight, which is like the final area, is Bowser's castle. And so you do all of Bowser's castle. For some reason, Peach's castle is on top of Bowser's castle, and you make it to Peach's castle. And then you fight Bowser a first time, and that's what's known as the hallway Bowser. Okay. And then you go and fight Bowser a second time, where he gets like stronger, and then you fight him again. What what item like did the... you use to freeze him for two turns? So you get these like card spirits, which give you like special abilities. Think of like the crystal stars in T two ID. Does that does which that is ring also very does that, does Think that of ring something else from said? another game of Paper Mario. <laughs> Think of. Um, I thought you would know Crystal Stars. I, like... I I'm trying my best. I shouldn't have asked anything about Paper Mario. I you know what I I I'm I'm just <laughs> you as good. I I'm I'm fine with thinking there's a hall pass item in Paper Mario that freezes Bowser for two turns. This is what my thought process was entering this. Okay, a- a- Sid, let, you know let, me, let me put it into terms you understand, Sid. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Th- think of the divine beast powers from Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, good yeah. One. Like, there, there's four of those, right? They shoot a beam. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there's four of those powers you get. One revives you if you die, but you think it's lame, so you don't use oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the um, lame one. Yeah. So there's four of those powers, yeah. and there's seven of them, essentially, in Paper Mario games. Uh-huh. Which is one of them is one, like the one of the cards Paper's talking about, and one's the hall pass. Yes, of course. <laughs> you can go to the restroom in Bowser's castle. It's pretty dope. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> that's very convenient. Yep. Correct. That's that's all I wanted to know. I wanted a brief uh, tutorial on Paper Mario in order to understand everybody's <laughs> love of that series. You know, because if there's div- divine, everybody loves the divine beasts in Breath of the Wild. That's that's all I know for sure. You know. I think people just like it because it's like a Mario RPG in an interesting style. And so like the casual Nintendo fan who doesn't know anything about RPGs can get into it really easily. Like me. Like me. Because like, like, I mean, <laughs> Mario RPGs were the first RPGs I really played, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, you know, Superstar Saga, we both, we both played that. Correct. Honestly, I'm not sure if I prefer Superstar Saga or TTYD. They're both amazing. In their own right. I don't want to play through Saga again, but I'd probably lean toward TTYD right now. I'm, yeah, I'm I gotta play him again too. I'm not gonna color this uh, question. I'm not gonna say what Trey's opinion is or anybody else's opinion. Trey, are you gonna get or not Trey? Paper Mar- paper. Paper Mario. Paper Mario. You paper get... Aria. You. Hello. Guest. Me. You. Guest. Uh, <laughs> are you interested in Paper Mario Origami? Uh. Somewhat. I'll probably play it, but I haven't really followed it intensely because there's not really much to follow. There's like a minute and a half of gameplay. But okay. I'm I'm interested in giving it a shot. I would love to play another Pape game. Are you are are you one of the people that buy a game and then within two days you're speedrunning it, or do you let it breathe? No, I I would definitely let it breathe. I probably wouldn't even speedrun that Pape if I'm being honest. Nice. <laughs> Although, like, it de- I mean, it depends on a lot of stuff. I mean, Sid and I have ranted no. about this quite a bit. Just people who want to get like that day one speedrun world record. No, I don't see. I don't see the point. But they, of that. I don't know. People just don't realize like the 15 minutes of fame you get from that is literally 15 minutes. Hey, the the guy that did the first speedrun, I I think it's like there's it rhymes with monkey or there's monkey in the name. The first guy that did Odyssey. He was in the record history video that I saw made by somebody that was put out at some Probably point. Probably small ants. So that existed. So he got his, he got his, you know? Yeah, you can even remember his name. It has monkey in it or something. Yeah, it had monkey in it. It, it might have rhymed with monkey. Yeah, maybe. That's, that's a good sign of fame right there. Yeah. So he's pretty cool, right? Like, day one world records, like, don't really mean a lot, but, like, if you like want to get good at a speed game eventually, you know, like you'll probably be playing it actively when it comes out, maybe or like like a week after or something. Which is yeah, still it, in like the infancy of a like game speedrun development. So. And honestly, we don't mean to critique the way someone plays a game. You can play a game however you like. I do. All we're saying <laughs> is, I'm speaking for everyone here, of course. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Is that um, it just. 
for us personally, it feels weird to not enjoy a game for what it is the first time. <laughs> If you really think about it, everybody speed ran Super Mario Odyssey because all speedrunners that played that game, like first day when you got the New Donk City and you got to that RC car game, you speed ran that shit. Everybody oh yeah, did. I tried for like probably ten minutes. Yeah, but you you tried to do your best within those ten. You're not proving my point, Trey. I need somebody that has fifteen. No, or... I speed ran it for like ten minutes. Oh my god, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and then okay, you, you know what? I'll prove your point. I, I actually, in my casual playthrough, I genuinely did speed run the second bouncing snowman race thing whatever it's called <laughs> the i got a sub 140 bouncer. i think it was pretty good so yep what, is paper has there ever been like the first any game it doesn't have to be odyssey can you think of a a small bit of like speed running that's bled into your casual playthroughs of any game where it's just like this thing i i need to speed run for at least 25 minutes and then i'll get it out of my system and go Maybe the, the RC the car sun, game does, from does, does Sunshine Arcade two count? Because like huh? I definitely did that a lot when I was playing that, but like that was because I was like looking for speedrun strats for when I maybe will speedrun that game. Are you gonna speedrun that game? Uh, I might. Right. I I I started like I played through Arcade two a hundred percent, um, and then I started like learning it, but I didn't get very far, and then just like pretty much stopped doing that to play one twenty. And for those who don't know, Sunshine Arcade 2 is a fully fledged out ISO hack of Mario Sunshine made by a player named Augs. Uh, it's pretty well done. So It's really good. You can probably just like YouTube Arc search uh, Sunshine Arcade 2 and you'll find it. Was there another was there another one other than Sunshine 2 or I'm Arcade 1? Think, <laughs> like the mo the most recent thing I would have to think of would either have to be Sunburn? No, not Sunburn cuz I didn't play it. <laughs> Like maybe something in Breath of the Wild, but I'm really trying to think of what speedrunning thing could have been in that game. Oh, sorry. For some reason, let's sit ask if there's other Mario hacks. I'm done. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Where where'd you get other, that? Other speedrun stuff. My bad. Hall pass, Trey. Hall pass. Come on. Oh, what is what's a hall pass in Paper Mario? <laughs> what's a hall pass in Paper Mario, man? Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything uh, Breath of the Wild speedrunny. Like, I don't. I'm, I've been oh, playing there's like that one running game which I might have been like I'm gonna put on a three times speed potion and see what time I can get. But dude, I I have not been screwing around with how how far did you get in Breath of the Wild? Breath, Breath of the Wild right now, I I've been picking at for the past few weeks. So your answer is really is actually important. I to think me. I I think I'm not as far as you in my main file. I want to say like the percentage is maybe like 60 70 and i had like 500 koroks that's pretty good i, that's I actually feel like really I, I, I played a lot of breath of the wild that was i definitely had a breath of the wild phase no that's um, pretty good did that's a lot more DLC? than i expected 500 that's more than most people get did you get the dlc i did get the dlc you, you wear the korok um, mask you walk i around? don't wear the korok mask you think it's cheating do you think it's cheating no because oh, okay. I literally I use know. an interactive map to find the Corax. <laughs> I don't know what I was hoping. But, uh, 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 I, dude, on the map screen in Breath of the Wild, I look at the percentage. I I haven't looked at it in a while, but it was at like 48% like two months ago. But I'm, what, two missions You're away, right. two shrines away from completing that, like three missions away from the side missions being done. Like, I don't know how I'm lower That's than 50%. That's really close. Right? Makes no sense. Wait, Wait, what's your percentage you now? Still son? lower? Yeah, what would it be? It, now it's got to be a lot higher. I, I don't well, know. Well, maybe not because each Korok is like 0 .08. <laughs> I know. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that Nintendo put in 900 Korok seeds and then went, okay, bye. <laughs> like, I can't. In the base game, just went, okay, you guys, here you go. You guys can do whatever you want with well, them. I'm, I'm pretty the sure they mask. don't expect you to find all of them. It's just sort of like, we're going to put a ton of them here. So you're guaranteed to find like a decent amount of them, but not all of them, probably. Well, it's, that's probably what they meant to do. Because, you know, like the Koroks had like a good upgrade. And so you're incentivized to look around for them. But like, clearly they didn't want you to find all of them because the max reward is at like half. Yeah. It's like a piece of half. poop. It's it, Yeah, then you go for it. Nintendo literally just rewards you with trash for playing side quest. It's, it's yeah, how actually dare they? insane. So, so paper, you might know this, but I've been picking at the Korok seeds. Uh, I know. I've probably watched a couple of those streams. Without the, 
Korok mask without the the map up like without any DLC, just wandering around looking for Korok seeds. I'm at 600 even now. That's really good. And uh eventually I'm going to I'm going to have to this it's going to get really tough cuz I I I'd like to equate the Korok seeds to like the developers being like uh, it's like the Odyssey moons where they're just throwing shit everywhere and they're just like, you're going to love it. Like we have all this shit everywhere and they just put 900 Koroxies and they just kind of go like, okay, we put 900 in this game. Y- you won't care to find them all, but have fun. You know? Yeah. It gives then, you incentive to explore, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I, I kind of enjoy that. But then they, they didn't think to go, oh, we'll put this mask in if you do such and such or once you've collected all of your inventory slots, they won't give you the mask to, to find them all, they went, oh shit, people want to find them all? Let's give them a mask in DLC. Like, they didn't have the for, have enough forward thought to give you that yeah. in the base game. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it the way they didn't want me to do it. <laughs> or they didn't. initially prove intended. Prove a point. Pardon me? As it, prove a point. Yeah. Prove just a point to like, Nintendo that you don't need it. Screw you, Nintendo. You, you yeah, think you're gonna, you can't. You don't, I don't need your mask. DLC you think you're going to patch this out? This is bullshit. <clears throat> okay so now that we're an hour into this podcast uh we should probably talk about the video that's playing on the video portion of this episode how about that pikmin game dude pikmin 2 is a is a really good speed game okay so so it's um, pikmin 2 specifically right it's pikmin 2 specifically okay. pikmin 1 is a good game like and there's a lot of stuff in pikmin 1 but i don't play that one personally because i think there's a lot cooler stuff in pikmin 2 what? And why is that? But yeah, I think well, I'll get into that. So I started playing <laughs> Pikmin two in like sorry, uh, like we're we're just raging because my internet keeps dropping. So just whatever. <laughs> I, I I'm just interested in how you're gonna edit it. I'm just like, dude. Well, I'll figure I'm, it out. <laughs> this is gonna be a pain to edit, but I got it. I got it. Trey's got it. Uh, I think it was like the end. I don't know. Maybe like midway through 2019. I started playing Pikmin 2 because I like got involved with that community watching some of the streamers of that game and I just thought the game was really sick because basically you go down into these caves um, with multiple sub-levels that are pseudo-randomly generated. Um, Persuado-random. Persuado-random and you run around and you know you find the treasures and you fight the enemies and then you get the money. But there's a lot of like Pikmin 2 is like a very deep game tech wise. Like there's a lot of stuff you can do with your Pikmin to like manipulate them in certain ways. And so you just it's basically like Sunshine Free Running, where you get into you go into this game with like a lot of tech skill and like fun things to do, and then just make stuff up as you go and figure mm. out how to play a layout or something. And that's why I thought the game was super interesting. Yeah. See, I've um, personally never played a Pikmin, but I've always wanted to get around to one. They're good. Especially casually. I like Pikmin a lot casually. Well, when but, I watched a couple of your streams of it uh, a while ago, I, I remember you equating it to Sunshine Bingo. And Yeah. Yeah. So, like, when you go to the next floor, you have to improvise a route based on what objects You're improvising are in- a route and movement based on where certain treasures spawn and what enemies are in certain locations. Yeah. And that, you know what? When it, you when you equate anything to SMS Bingo, I'm like, oh, that's, that's actually kind of... Because back in the day, we all used to be... Actually, all three of us used to be considered good at Bingo. You know? Correct. So... I did recently get into the grand finals of the Mario Sunshine 1v1... Lockout attorney. Pog. <laughs> All right. Yeah. How did how did that go? But, <laughs> I don't know, dude. I showed up and played some matches. I fought Danny to the, or yesterday two days ago in winners finals. Yeah. And stomped him. Easy oh, yeah. match. Nah, it and was. Danny's it was pretty, pretty good too. That's a good victory. Nah, it was it was a it was a good match. Um. But yeah, something Sib was saying something about being good at bingo. Yeah, We're, we've all been debatably good at bingo. Like me, Correct. Uh, Trey's been carried to finals in the past. Yeah, see, uh, I team with Capilon, who carried me. I team with Sid, yeah. who carried me. I'm not yeah. good, but, but we'll say I'm good just to humor you, okay? You you have jumped off after collecting 99 coins in the secret in Gelato <laughs> twice. Three times, but it's, Three it's okay. 
<laughs> I like that you corrected me. Yes. I, dude, believe me, that third time I thought, okay, this is it. There's no way I'm going to mess this up. Here we go. And honestly, all right, so to be more specific, if you don't know what we're talking about, um, I'm supposedly I was good at bingo, according to Sid, at some point. But let's just say that I've made probably the most time-wasting mistake you can possibly make three different times in my whole bingo career. Yeah, the same mistake. Which is gelato hundreds in the episode one secret stage. Because the way Mario Sunshine works, you can actually collect 100 coin shines inside secrets if they have coins in them. So there's a, there's a bingo goal where you get a 100 coin shine in a secret. So sometimes it's good to combine this. You get, there's the goal of gelato <laughs> hundreds plus the hundreds in a secret, like two goals for the price of one. Sure, let's go for it. it it's the worst goal. It's the worst combination of goals. It's the least fun combination of goals in, in the entirety of bingo. It's yeah, because gelato, gelato 100s takes a lot longer than gelato 300s, which is already pretty long. It sucks. So by, by the time you get 99 coins, open the sand castle, go in the secrets, all you have to do is successfully make your way to the middle platform, ground pound a nail to get a coin, and then make your way across a couple more gaps to get to the shine. Pretty, pretty simple, right? Yeah. I have died attempting that three different matches probably across the span of five years. I, my favorite part of all of, of all of that is that when you died the last time, you like tried to defend your movement or whatever. Like you jumped dove onto the nail. Okay, here's, here's the thing. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember if it was the second or the third time it happened where that happened. Because if it I, was the second time, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what the third thing I did was. <laughs> like how did I mess it up a third time? <laughs> I, I don't know. But when we talked about it afterwards and we reviewed the tape, you like jump dove onto the nail at, the, <laughs> at like the exact height of the nail. So like in Sunshine... Nails aren't very long, so you dive onto it, and then you just immediately fall off, and yeah. then you just die. See, what I know? was trying to do to save, <laughs> like, a single frame, probably, yeah, was a jump dive onto the nail into ground pound, yeah, as opposed to just jumping over into ground pounding, but my dive was, like, like you said, the perfect height for the nail, so I just, like, dove onto the nail, and then, like, I couldn't even save myself. <laughs> Yeah, because if you roll out, you're dead. If you you can't ground pound because you're on top of the nail, and once you're off the nail, you you have like maybe a frame or two to save it. You can maybe save it, but it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, we, basically, we, um, we were all good bingo. <laughs> because I failed it three different times, I'm never going to go for that again. Well, that was uh, the last time you played bingo, really. If I play bingo again, which is debatable, but anyway. Yeah. Back to the two metaphor. Two v two tourney. Two v two tourney. <laughs> Goodness. All right, so we were saying Pikmin 2 is like bingo, so <laughs> yeah. more on that, please. <laughs> I'm glad we talked about Gelato 100s, though. I'm yeah, glad we, we really should dude. reflect on how I've messed that up so many times. I'm glad that that's the story that popped up. Did you say 2v2 tourney paper? I, I was saying that as like the last time that you guys probably played bingo, right? Yeah, I think so. Like the, the last match we did, probably. Yeah, that sounds right. We, we did lose to Reed and Popo, so... They destroyed us. <laughs> they, we got annihilated. They they pen a rushed and I pen a semi rushed. So yeah, you can see you can guess how that went. Yeah, we. You know what? We were good at bingo four years. What 2018? Two years ago. Two it years was ago. 2018. Yeah. Yeah, and paper's hey, been good something. at bingo for that entire. Like you know how we started off this. We talked about how he started in 2012 and he's been like pretty good the entirety and now he's. Come into himself, and been paper really has good. ascended. Yeah, so now he's back to being good. Because there was an era like paper used to be the golden god of bingo way back in the day when I was learning bingo. When Trey was learning, I don't know when Trey learned yeah. bingo. He's been around, but paper was the golden god. He was like, "We're we're gonna do the three v three blackout, and I'm I'm gonna route it and get mad at you guys if you screw up." <laughs> And then, of course. And, and then, if uh, average Swan won, and he probably got mad at it. Oh but, yeah, average Swan has never did, been defeated. But did there was we that play little three v three blackout. We did three v three blackout. We did two of them in one day. Uh, I'm just remembering one day. 
I think I've but. done like three total, and I think I was on a team with paper and we lost. <laughs> I think that every yeah. time I team with paper, I always lose for some reason. It's it's a sad time. There was I, uh, Trey and I had a good match with like JJ and Quan as like an exhibition. Good match. <laughs> we came back pretty hard, dude. I, okay, so that match, I was pinna rushing against JJ, and yeah, I guess how that went. That sucks. That I got, didn't go I got well. destroyed. <laughs> Like, we got destroyed early game, but then made it, like, somewhat interesting. Yeah, I, I don't was, know what I it is. I thought it was still I like, funny. I feel like us as a team is cursed paper. It probably is. I don't know why. Like, you'd think it'd be a good team, but it's just not. So, it goes early day paper, really good at bingo, and then mi middle paper is just, like, he became one of the pack, you know? He teamed with paper, or with uh, Pyroshade in the 2014 tournament. There's the famous clip of him standing in front of Bianco not knowing what to do. Oh, God. Staring into Babe the abyss classic. after getting sniped to, like, what, Bianco 4? And then just nah. kind of, like, leaving without I, I getting bet, the shine and then just standing there? Yeah, I bet the pa Paper Shade still has Vietnam flashbacks to that first TVT lockout tournament. You, do, you, do you recall that match at all, Paper? No. No? <laughs> Zero bits. I think, well, I commentated all of that, so I probably commentated that match. The th so, the thing is, I've been around, like, a really long time. I don't remember most of, like the first couple of years of my speed running. And then I don't remember most of 2015 and 2016 because I either wasn't around or I really wasn't playing Sunshine at that point. Yeah, for, there was a period where you like, just like weren't playing at all for like a like, year, I think. Yarn Kirby and Paper Mario like way more than Sunshine. See, and then I go for it. Um like I wasn't really speed running much at that time either because I was in like high school and band and that was where I did like most of my time, and then I speed run other times. That makes sense. I'm, I'm with that. So, so there was the dip in the middle. There was the dip in the middle, standing in front there of. There was Bianco. definitely a dip in the middle. Like if you, you could go back to like before 2017, when I like more so came back, um, because at that point I like had graduated and was in college, and so I had like way more time to speed run. And also Trey's like any percent history video came out, and I was like, man. There were a couple times where, like, I was good at this game. I want to be that again. <laughs> and then I, like, worked my butt off to try to get back up here. Yeah. But, like, 2015 to 2017, like, I had, like, barely a top 50 any percent time. Which now, compared to my barely top 30 time. <laughs> really? Barely top 30? I think it's, like, 25th. Dude, right now, like, top 20 is so stacked. <clears throat> I think I'm like, if you count Samu's actual PB, I'm 19th right now. Yeah, it's actual it's, PB. It's Come wild. on. <laughs> okay, Come I'm 18th. On, Fuck it. You're, you're in a call with the originator of, if you really think about it, I have a 119. Well, no, like Samu had a run that actually was faster, but there, like his video wasn't good enough. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, so well, yeah, but the paper thing where it's like, if you really think about it, I have a 119. Like, that's bullshit, but... <laughs> I don't even. I, I wish I could remember that quote better. Oh, uh, that's I, funny. I, I, I could have sworn I meant it not seriously. No. But I think that's how I, I construed I, it, though. Then Sid raged at the fact that he thought it was serious. I, I'm, I'm really good at just like sitting there and poking fun at what people do in regular conversation, where it was just like me, Paper, and Trey in a call in what, 2014, 2015, something like that. L literally five years ago, at least. And. Uh, paper was talking about how he had a 120 at the time. Trey and I both had like, he had a 23 and I had a 24 or something approximating those times. And paper was sitting there going like, time. if you, if you really think about it, I have a 119. And then I, I just <laughs> let it sit for a second. Trey was just like, yeah, yeah. And then it just like skated by. I'm like, no, <laughs> we are not letting this pass. <laughs> I am not letting That's this slide. That's hilarious. At all. I'm not letting this slide at all, and it's been there ever since in my in in the back of my head. If anybody says like, if you really think about it, I have this time, and they don't actually have this time. Don't don't let it skate by. Or, or like, yeah, if I just like played more, I'd have this time. Like, no. Yeah, as an excuse. But, but uh, I'll, I'll admit, I used to be that guy who would go along with it. Like, yeah, he's right. If he just did play more, he'd have that time. And this is this is when <laughs> 119 was good. Oh, 119 was insane back then. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That was like top ten for sure. Tobo Tobo's one nineteen thirty four stood for five months. But yeah, pa paper now. Thanks for he, thanks he, for the fact. He <laughs> wipes his ass with one nineteens. Well, to be fair, you could take a shit and get a one sixteen. 
<laughs> according to Reed. <laughs> that was a good quote. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, so you know what's funny about the the you saying like the one nineteen while well, like whatever is JJ and I were messing around really hard in the the any percent weekly yesterday, and both of us finished the any percent race with like thirty blue coins. Just for fun, you know, and we both he got like a one nineteen, I got like a one twenty, and we both played really bad. The disrespect. And see, we got second and third in that race too. See, Zeldocto would be really pissed at you guys right now. Good. That's all I need. <laughs> <Good. laughs> Do you have any fun stories about Zeldocto? <laughs> Who me? I don't <laughs> No, pay for <laughs> I don't think I do. I don't think yeah, a random I question. I, yeah, like, I, don't I don't remember. I don't remember nearly enough about Zoldocto. I know I, the name, but I don't remember the personality at all. I I just remember the pace bin he wrote, getting mad at a lot of like this is what 2015. Just this was this dude. I remember. Okay, I know exactly when it was because Hidden Power 13 and I were at HDQ 2015 reading the pace when bin it when it came out. <laughs> so it was January 2015, and he made a pace bin essentially saying. Don't say like your PB sucks or whatever. That's just that's that's not nice uh, to people yeah. who have a worse PB. Instead, you should say stuff like I can trash my PB. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, that's why every now and then I say I can trash my PB <laughs> for the meme. Just for the meme, but it, it is pretty funny. This is also the same person. I, th I think it's the same person that thought that you jumped higher with the spray <laughs> nozzle versus the oh, hover right. nozzle. It's like spray nozzle versus hover nozzle jumping comparison Dude. video. There's and so many of those like little bits of SMS history, like the psycho strats it, to enter Noki Bay. Yeah, we can get into more of these. Like at some other point, there's just so many of them. Oh, there's so many. In our second last episode before the Kinney episode, we have to go through them all. <clears throat> the Kinney episode, yeah, when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what what gameplay will we show on screen for the Kinney episode? I don't. Uh, An hour and a half of him doing Kinney kicks. There you go. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing less will suffice. There's a reason it's called Kenny Cakes. Oh, dude, can we talk about how you used to <laughs> no. rage at the term Kenny Cakes paper? Oh, okay, wait. I think I raged at the term Kenny Kick for the Serena 2 strat. Okay. Okay. I don't think I raged at Kenny Kicks for like the, the flat wall wall kick. Or no. All right, no, okay. So I think paper kicks were the 90 degree variants. That was the 90 degree variance, and then Kenny did the flat wall one. Which is even harder. But then Kenny got like credit for like the Serena 2, like where you jump off the stew and then triple jump Y turn. Didn't Kenny find that? I was like, I was almost positive I found that, but hmm. like, I didn't really care too much to bring it up. I was like, you know what, Kenny can have this. I always but, thought that was Kenny uh, until this very moment. Yeah, same. It, well, now you, now you know some interesting SMS facts. It feels like a Huff know, Electro that, moment. That could be like a me misremembering thing too. But this like, feels like a bra moment. It's definitely a bra moment. <laughs> At the very least, it's probably we both found it independently. But like, yeah, kind of like a he, he, he could have done it first, or but yeah, exactly. It didn't really matter too much, and I didn't care to make an issue out of it. Okay, well, I think we've covered uh, a lot of your games you've speed ran, unless there was some other game you wanted to talk about. <laughs> well, talk you about know what? The, the... We, before Trey... Uh, so, sorry, sorry, Paper. Trey, we can ask about the resume. That's what I was going to get to. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about the resume. This is the you next part of the thing. It, it's your, you don't I ask think it's him, your turn to pop the question, Sid. You, you don't ask him about <laughs> the the games he wants to talk about now you have to ask him his resume and if it bleeds into other games. You know, we didn't talk oh. about Overwatch. We, See, we didn't talk about Overwatch with Huff until he listed it on his resume. You know? All right, this is actually, this is like our pre-planned <laughs> segment during the actual segment. Yeah. Or this is, this is pre-planning uh, during an episode. Anyway. I don't know what we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> this is... I, I don't know where you guys are going is, either. <laughs> this is the least prep we've ever done for an episode. And I'm kind of enjoying it, but also hating it to its core. All right. All right, Sid, pop the question if you so want, d desire to do so. Will you marry me, paper? All right. Uh, that's, the question. that's the pop the question. Uh, well. Sorry. That was my good joke. Uh, All right. The resume. Is that a reason to leave? The resume. The resume. You are a gamer. 
In, in the I'm hypothetical world, you are a gamer, okay? Okay. <laughs> You've written a resume that contains all of your greatest gaming achievements onto one page with a cover letter. Maybe a bibliography in the back for literally no reason. That just says bibliography because you don't <laughs> have bibliography. <laughs> yeah, a cover it's letter. A, it's a school research paper instead of a resume. Yeah, cover letter, resume, and you have this whole list of. It's not your sources. And you're walking into an office, and Tobo is sitting at a table. <laughs> he he speaks English in this reality. Oh, no. All right, in this hypothetical world where you're a gamer, Tobo also speaks English. Uh, okay. <laughs> he's, because those two things can never happen. Those, yeah, they can't coincide. So you're handing him this resume. You're looking for a job gaming. Who knows? I don't know what the, the, the job is. It's for anything you want it to be. But you're trying to impress him and get the job. What okay. do you put on your resume, on your greatest achievements in gaming resume? Uh, probably near the top or at the top would be like eight years of speed running, Sunshine 120 world record. Oh, so Even like then, de dedication to speed running is one of them, you think? I think so. Like, yeah, eight years in a hobby, like, I think that shows a lot, a lot Definitely. of dedication to the gaming craft. Uh, Probably, probably right under that, I would probably put like my my Pikmin and Mario U accomplishments because those two games I actually sort of did well in. Um, I had like a, I still have a top ten time in Pikmin two any percent and like a decent time in the hundred percent category of that game. So those are probably there. I was almost had the record in in um, Super Mario Bros U any percent. But I was like ten seconds away from that. But I still how, have like how a top optimized four is time. That? It's pretty good. I mean, the record now is a lot better. Like right. when I was going for the record, it was a thirty-seven twenty-four, and now it's a thirty-seven sixteen. Hmm. And like my sob in that game is probably a thirteen or twelve. So the world record's really good. But uh. Yarn Kirby, definitely nowhere on that list. <laughs> <laughs> definitely nowhere. You don't want anybody to know that you played Yarn Kirby? Nope. Nope. Honestly. You think that Tobo would reject your. <laughs> Absolutely. Resume? I yep. probably couldn't even put my Sunshine accomplishments on there because Tobo would be like, I did better than this. <laughs> Go back. Well, not at 120 uh, shines now. Uh, probably a lot of stuff about bingos and like the community things. That we've done in the past, like the the relay races, the tournaments. Two oh, time yeah, helped back to back run, sunshine tournament winner. Helped run season five period. of the task stuff. Oh, the tasks! That was a good time. I, I wish they were knows. better. I wish I was more creative, but I'm glad that I did it at all because the tasks mm -hmm. were like, it was a fun thing to try to do, see how well of a job I could do. Yep, and. Do you put on the resume you beating JJ in that like best of three grand finals on GSA? Do you put no, that on there? But I, I don't tell them that, but I tell them I won the tournament. <laughs> it's like I won the tournament, but don't watch the last VOD. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't watch the the tournament winning match. That part, no. Yeah. Some of the other matches though. I, I got a a PB in one of those races. I got like a one sixteen oh two. Or no, I tied my PB of one sixteen oh two. That oh yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. I heard. I, I remember seeing that. That happened, I think, in the race for Ouija. <clears throat> I, in like pools. I remember commentating <laughs> with Electric in the grand finals with uh, JJ versus you, and it was uh, I, I don't know. It eventually. It, it, what what did JJ like? Essentially forfeited both games. <laughs> like he just. Yeah, it was it was bad. I think. JJ just fell really far behind in both, and then I finished some like really mediocre runs. Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the standard SMS any percent tournament. I, I feel like yeah, it, no. it, it can go really well sometimes if it's close races, but it can also go pretty one-sided. And like someone dies in Piazza, it almost feels like it's over immediately. 
Yeah. That pretty much happened in the race JJ and I had yesterday. I died yeah. in Pianta 5 and I couldn't come back for the rest of the race. Like yeah. Pianta 5 is a very relatively common place to die early on and it's a pretty big time loss. Yeah. But, uh... I, I just feel like any, for any percent races... Oh, yeah. I think like a, like a different format is probably better. Like I think, yeah. I think something for that, like, heats would have to be, like, required. Because, mm -hmm. like... Two people racing any percent is so boring, and then you have so many more matches with so much of the same commentary for the exact <laughs> same stuff that, like, you don't want to see. Dude, commentating any percent races, like, the hundredth one you do, you're just like... So this is travel skip again. Uh... <laughs> Eventually, you're just hanging out. You're just like... Yeah. The... Uh, sub other commentator what's what's up with like if 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 they're that far apart you don't want to talk about every, it's the it's the just streamer problem of playing sunshine and being required to explain every it's mario you're going fast yeah you, like, you can't treat it like a gdq run you gotta treat it like yeah we're gonna give like some little fun facts about these runners and maybe like just talk about other stuff occasionally and like yeah. mention if they yeah. die somewhere that's pretty important i guess like, but you can't just like yeah. go by the books GDQ run style. That's nah, pretty boring. if you go GDQ run, like you're you might as well. Yeah, you're messing up. <laughs> I would actually probably rather watch no commentary than any commentary like, if you're doing GDQ commentaries. The reason style. GDQ runs are the way they are is because it's going to the widest possible audience of like people who don't even know what speedrunning is probably. So explaining stuff makes sense there. Whereas right. like on Sunshine Community streams. The majority of the chat already knows what's going on, so you can kind of like poke fun and like just sort of hang out, like Sid said. This is yeah, GBS. Like, <laughs> we run into a coconut and then we clip into a hut. That's it. And that's it. That's like your entire explanation of this like big trick, right? Yeah. And then you just move on. And then you're just yeah. Like, like, yeah. That's that's perfectly acceptable. That's good. Yeah. You run into a coconut. Hog. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's it. <laughs> you run into a coconut. You know. <laughs> Imagine going back to like 2013 and telling someone that like to do gelato beach skip, it's like run into a coconut, and they would be so confused. Yeah, tell and that then to in Sid. 2014. I bet he wouldn't quit. <laughs> I quit, dude. <laughs> dude. I I I've quit. I've requit today in, in a, <laughs> because of the new in, Rico Eight clip. <laughs> the, the Rico Eight clip doesn't even make sense. I don't know what's going on. I I look at like Switchmaster's clip of it and uh, Greg War's clip of it, and they're just diving into this grate and then clipping in and i did it once after trying it for 20 minutes and i'm like this is like gbs all over again i'm just quitting this game this game th it doesn't make sense <laughs> over a skip that saves like 10 seconds we're, and we're, isn't no, we're, going for, we're going full circle i quit the game for gbs i came back you know what i'm quitting the game because of this clip and i'm done it's over because of an obscure rico 8 clip yeah and you know what it would save time and in, in is it actually? Do you know anything about this clip paper? I do know the clip. <clears throat> Have you done it? But I haven't done it. But. I guess I'll explain it to the lovely listeners. <laughs> so, Rico, thank you for your for, thank you, Trey, for your GDQ commentary. <laughs> thank you to to, to GDQify this. Um, Rico, wait. Usually, you got to get the free machine to get Yoshi, and then you get the platforms across, and you spray the <laughs> shit and you go into the thing. Yeah. But for a while now, there's been a clip where you can use a coconut. Which is cool. Yeah. But yeah. now there's an even newer one, which is coconutless. And uh, you, all you got to do is like dive into the corner a very specific way. And it's like half inspired by me because I uploaded a clip a year and a half ago and Zelpiku like found it and went, huh. And then tried to emulate it and went, oh, it works. And then. Okay, how found... did Zelpiku find a random tweet of I yours from like a year ago? Like he retweeted it, what? A month ago and was just like huh and then like two days later him and him and orange or zmd krr who whatever you want to call them they both uploaded videos being like oh yeah we figured this out in rico 8 uh it's done and it's just like okay cool whatever That's and i'm just wild. sitting here being like i don't know how to do this clip nobody explains anything and then i look at a switch master video of him clipping into the grade and getting the shine immediately in like 30 seconds and he's just like yeah it's really important about your x position <laughs> and i'm sitting there going like what does that mean <laughs> and i'm sitting there like wouldn't wouldn't z position matter as well why just x that's i don't I get don't it I, i'm really mad at this trick right now i i i literally <laughs> because because paper pushed back the podcast recording by like two hours i had the extra time to dedicate to like 
relearning some 96 shine stuff and actually learning new 96 shine stuff because I'm planning to go back to any percent 96. And I'm trying this Rico 8 clip and I'm like, now I'm just pissed. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm really mad that Paper pushed back the podcast because now I have time to play this game. Congratulations, Paper. You pushing the podcast back <laughs> has made Sid quit the game forever. I've quit. I'm, I'm sorry, Sid. But All your fault. Know this. Everyone quits Sunshine at some point. Dude, I think this is the Unless longest she... stint. Actually, that's not true. I, I, I've had longer breaks from Sunshine, but I've just had like zero motivation to play the game for the past few months. And that's also being uh, further pushed by my recent obsession with the new Xenoblade remaster that came out. Having a blast with that. Hmm. I didn't even know that existed. Definitive edition. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, it's, uh, this is my first time playing a Xenoblade. It's really good so far. I'll share my thoughts on it more in the next guestless episode, but for now, just know that I'm still playing it, so. Hey, paper. Nice. Hi. I share one uh, update, and it's like, you're ignoring papers. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm just saying, hey, paper. I don't know. It was dead air. I was going to be in like, your hey, let's go back aggressive to the... Tone. I, I don't have any tone. <laughs> I knew you would I'm, say that, too. God damn it. I just wanted to say hey to paper. You ruined the paper. podcast. <laughs> I didn't say it. I forever. talked about 96 shines <laughs> at the beginning of this podcast for like 10 <laughs> minutes when we had a guest. I don't mention paper for two seconds. I was just ranting about... After I talked about 96 shines for like 15 minutes, I was sitting there going like... Why did I talk about 96 shines for 15 minutes? We have a guest. So, Paper, are you marrying Sid or not? No. <laughs> and, and if so, okay, on your cover letter for the resume, I just want to know if there's a picture of regular Paper Ario or cooler Paper Ario. Mm. Um, it'd probably be cooler Paper Ario. He's yeah. got the shades. Yeah. I think that the cooler Paper Ario definitely came out when the, the new 120 world records came out the show yeah <laughs> sort of uh i missed like the last like 20 seconds of conversation so uh <laughs> wait did i did i cut out again this podcast no. is amazing <laughs> no I, I i just missed it personally oh, uh, we were just i mean sid asked you that question and you answered it quite eloquently i did and then but i didn't I, I didn't know where the rest of like conversation like led up to it i just knew about the the cooler paper are you and i was like okay we're saying you're you're a cool guy, Paper. I am very cool. Yeah, what, is it, what is this episode right now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of happy that it exists, though. Yeah. You know, it's it's our one episode we're allowed to just kind of like hang. Uh, so so Paper, the the we're hanging. The, a Paper yes. and I, Paper Trey and I used to hang in in Skype calls back in the day, lurking in a Skype call. Lurking when, in a Skype call. Which Skype calls, quickly became lurking in a Discord call. Yeah. Discord's better. But, uh, oh, really? So, so, so the resume. <laughs> yes, Trey. Discord's better. So the, Thank you. The resume. I, I had this resume. Yes. Of gaming stuff. I don't think I really would add anything to anything else I said. I couldn't think of anything else. Yeah, I thought it was good. You don't want to add too much because, like, Tobo doesn't want to read that much. Short yeah. and simple. You, you play Minecraft? I didn't. I have not ever played Minecraft. Okay, I'm just wondering. It's, it's got to meet his quota. Well, no, I just, I'm just asking. I'm making fun of non sequitur. <laughs> just an interesting question. Quota. Don't worry about it. I'm asking how much Minecraft. Just, just a random zero. question. Yeah, you're right. If it's zero, then that's fine. You know, not disrespecting the man. You've never played Minecraft, paper? I don't think I ever had. Damn, that's crazy, actually. That's a stat. You should put that on your resume. Never played Minecraft. That is ne actually really never impressive. Played Minecraft. I was just, I was never interested in it. Although I like Animal Crossing, but okay. like. I actually, um, I recently quit New Horizons Cold Turkey about a week ago. I, I didn't cold turkey New Horizons, but like when I decided to try to get good at Sunshine, I basically just stopped doing anything else but that wasn't Sunshine. I'm kind of the same way. I, I have to focus on one thing at a time. If, if I try like half ass two things. They're just both half-assed, and I just feel bad about both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll probably play New Horizons at some point again, though. Like, I enjoyed it. I just, like, wanted to focus on other things. And Yeah, exactly. I was kind of the same way. At some point, like, my town got, like, halted in, like, where I was going with it, and I was like, I don't really have any more creative ideas, and then I just dropped. I made, like, one fairly cool area in my town, then my inspiration ran out, and I just kind of stopped playing it. Yeah. 
So paper. <laughs> it's been it's been nice having you on the podcast. It's been a treat. Thank you. Thank I, you for letting me be on the podcast. Is is this <laughs> the end? Are we just ending? I think this is is this the end? Yes. Yeah, I thought you were ending it right now. <laughs> I think we're ending. You gotta commit to the bit. I, the no, I have bit. to I, I have to commit to this podcast being awesome bad. I don't understand what this podcast is, but it, it was uh, it was a it was a trip for sure. For sure. Hope we you all enjoy this Pikmin gameplay if you're not listening to the audio recording only. We should we should prep more for podcasts. Nah, I thought this was fine. <laughs> the people just get to see what casual Trey and Sid look like. Yeah, everything every episode before this has been entirely not scripted. Casual. <laughs> this is our first non scripted episode ever. Yeah, you, usually we have like pages and pages and then we just kind of go through it all. But uh, do you have any shout outs to go through? paper for the ending of your episode of the podcast which was the greatest episode so far shout outs to train Sid for their preparedness yes. uh shout outs to the sunshine community for being epic shout outs to pyro shade shout outs to my mom simp mom yeah trade mom <laughs> trade mom Thank you. Sid mom and uh that'll do shout outs to oflaker only reason i'm any sort of famous Let's go. Out. <laughs> you know, Nanashi doesn't get enough praise for how much routing he does cuz he does an awkwardly uh, uh, like not an awkwardly, but like an amount of routing that goes unnoticed within the SMS community. Like people re he he rerouted 96 shines uh Serena 100s just kind of randomly and just gave it to me and I'm oh, like yeah. cool or gave it to the community, but he gave it to me cuz I'm the 96 shine guy. And <laughs> <laughs> and he does random 120 stuff, but not a lot of people really shout him out for that. But then again, it's an English podcast, but shout outs to Nanashi. That's my shout out for the, all right. for the cast. <clears throat> but yeah. Very so good shout that, outs all around. That's been episode 34 of the podcast. Video games are hard. We're on Google uh, Play and Spotify. If you want to listen there as well on, on YouTube, Average Trey VG. Thanks for hanging out as long as this podcast was. Thanks to Paper for hanging out with us, and thanks to my co-host Trey for being with us as well. Indeed. Thanks for hanging, and see you next week. Later, folks. Play the clarinet. Clarinet, play us out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>